Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we're going to continue building our simple Phoenix Live View app. This will be episode number five, so long as you count the really short upgrade episode we had. And last, actually a couple times ago, we planned out some DB schemas, and we were looking at the more complex relationships in Alchemist Camp and the simpler system that'll work for this new site we're making, Reactor, and here those schemas and contexts and so forth are. So let's make these into uh, Phoenix generators. And I like to write them all out together so that if there's anything that's not right, I can you know drop the database and rerun them entirely. It's totally preference. I just find it a little bit faster and easier to do it this way. So first thing we need is for users, we're gonna need the full HTML. So that's in the accounts context. So we'll do mix phoenix.gen.html, then accounts is the name of the context, then user is the name of the schema, then users will be the database table name, and they'll have a name and they'll have email, which uh, both those are strings, so we don't need to type anything else is verified is going to be a uh, boolean so boolean and then we'll have a password hash and we'll also have a website and that's everything in the accounts context since the only thing we had in there was users so let's delete all of this password and password confirmation aren't in the database so they're not going to be part of these generators but we will have to write some code for that later when we do auth so the next thing is podcasts. I'm just gonna copy this whole line here and get to here. And the context this time is content. Podcast is a schema, podcasts. And actually let's alphabetize this. It'll make it a little bit easier because every, everything will get generated in the same positions as we type them in. Subtitle goes there. All right. So podcast, I have an audio URL. That's a string. Is published is going to be a Boolean. Our notes and our markdown are actually both going to be text type. As far as Ecto is concerned, or I should say as far as Elixir is concerned, they're the same to have a, a text or a string, but Postgres has a, a distinction. Strings are shorter, just 255 characters text is unbounded uh, notes and those are text as well subtitle is a string and title is a unique string and the comment is going to be very similar so i'll just copy what i could there this will be comment and comments Comments don't have an audio URL. They do have is published, and they also have an is flagged. So let's just uh, write that in, is flagged, which is also a Boolean. There's no notes.html or, wait a minute, we've got something missing here. So comments have to have some content. It's not just what they're commented on and who commented it and whether it's published or flagged. So in fact, let's let's uh, change that to uh, just HTML and markdown because that's that's really all there is. So I'll do that and MD. That's not very good. We'll just call it markdown. All right, that's, yeah, that's a bit more reasonable. So we'll change this the same way. And that one is Markdown. Okay, do they have a title, subtitle? No, they do not, maybe someday, but they do have a user ID and a podcast ID. So let's add both of those in. Podcast ID, references, uh, podcasts. And then user ID references users. Okay, then we can delete these two podcasts and comment. 
Next is topic. And that's a little bit different because topics aren't really going to have um, any pages associated with them. The topics will show up as tags on podcasts. So we're not going to be able to copy quite as much as we could previously. Uh, it's still going to be, actually, it's not going to be HTML. We're going to be generating uh, context only. So context and it's still going to be in content. And instead of comment, it's going to be topic and topics. In fact, let's just delete everything at the end of the line there. Topics, they have a name which is unique. It's a string, so you don't have to specify that. And similar to this generator, podcast topic is also just going to be uh, a context with no specific pages for it. So uh, content podcast topic and then instead of topics it's going to be podcast underscore topics and there's no name instead of a name we have a topic id and a podcast id so podcast id we'll do it alphabetical references podcasts and then topic id references topics and we can get rid of these. We're done with the content context. And we'll just hold off on social. We're definitely not going to have that uh, as part of the initial launch of the site. With that set up, we'll try pasting the first one into the terminal. So should be pretty straightforward. Looks good. Now the other generators are all in the same context. So it's going to ask, well, this, this one will run fine. And then this one will ask, do you actually want to inject more into the content context? It already exists. And the way to get around that is with a Unix command called yes, that will pipe into it. I'll show you what it does first, and then we'll, uh, we'll run all of these. It's uh, a really simple command that I, I didn't discover until fairly recently actually, but it's it's great for this kind of thing. So if we run yes, it will just produce Y's endlessly, confirming any kind of interactive command line prompt. So when we pipe yes into a, a command that's running, it will get all of those, con uh, all those prompts confirmed, but then once the running command ends, then yes isn't piping in anything anymore. So it will stop instead of uh, uh, turning your, your computer into a heater. So we'll run this and everything confirms. Next, before we run any migrations, let's uh, add the lines to the router that we were asked to. And then also take a look at the schemas and the migrations. So in our router, We've just got that foo page. I guess I uh, pulled it back from version control after the last episode. And we need to add resources for comments and for anything else where we used an HTML generator. So that'll be users and podcasts. So users, user controller and actually that should be at the bottom we'll just keep this uh, alphabetical as well and podcast and this will also be podcast okay yep just those three let's go to the schemas next we'll start with the user schema and password hash is going to have to change when we implement auth it's not something the user enters themselves it's something that we generate and we're going to need those two virtual fields I mentioned, password, uh, just password actually, and password confirmation. So we'll do confirmation, and both of them are virtual, virtual true, and, and we'll just leave it at this point for now. And let's see. We're not going to require the password hash. Uh, and we're not going to require is verified to be passed in either. 
If they are, we will pay attention to them. Let's add some validations. We'll do a validate format on the email. And format is going to be regular expression. Anything that has, I'll just need the R there. Anything that has an at sign in it is good enough. And, and then we'll also validate the format of the website. So it'll just be website. And this one's a little bit more complicated. It's got to start with an HTTP or an HTTPS. So S question mark will match if the S is there. It'll match if the S isn't there. And then we need a colon. We have to backslash escape that as well as the slash slash. This is just to help a user avoid a typo, something like that. And we'll give a custom message of must be a URL. And then let's add a uniqueness constraint so we can send back an error message if someone tries to take uh, someone else's email address. And uh, instead of getting uh, like an error from the database, we'll have a nice message. So email's got to be unique. And for now, that's the only one. Two people could have the same website. That looks good for the user schema. We'll skip the content schemas for now. We can always do that later, but the migrations, we pretty much have to get all of the adjustments we're going to make before we run uh, Ecto migrate. So everything looks okay here, except let's add an index. We'll create an index for the user's name. So this will be users and name, and that's it. And let's actually do that for email as well. That's generally a primary index. Now let's have a look at the others. Create podcast, unique index on title. That's good. Uh, don't think we need the subtitle, anything like that indexed. Audio URL is also not something I expect that we'd be looking up podcasts with. So that seems sufficient for podcasts look at create comments is published k okay. text we'll change this to nothings to delete all so if a podcast is deleted all the comments on it will be deleted as well delete all and same thing for the user id okay so delete a user, all their comments are gone. We're probably never going to delete a user. Next is topics. Not really anything to change there. And the last one is podcast topics. So podcast ID references podcasts. Again, if we delete a podcast, we should just delete all of the podcast's tags. So. We'll change this to delete all. And if a topic is deleted, all the tags using that topic are deleted as well. Podcast topics, podcast ID. Okay. One more thing we need to do is we need to make a unique index that checks for the uniqueness of the combination of a podcast ID and a topic ID. That way we can make sure that we don't have a given podcast double tagged with the same topic. So that would just be bizarre. So we'll create unique index with podcast topics. And then the columns will be podcast ID and topic ID. And I believe that should make these two lines unnecessary but I'm not 100% sure, so we'll leave them in for now. And let's open up the sidebar, make sure that we got them all. Yep. Uh, comments, yeah, we don't need a unique index there because the same person could comment on the same podcast multiple times. Okay, looks good to me. Do mix ecto.migrate. Okay, that's done. Let's actually run the app now. Mix Phoenix phoenix.server. Okay, that looks good. And we have users. And we can create a new user here. 
just make it myself. So alchemist.camp at gmail.com. Verify the password is not a real password. And website is alchemist.camp. Okay, save that. Something went wrong. What can't be blank? Nothing is blank, so that means I probably said something was required. Let's see. Oh, I see. It looks like I have these backwards. So this is a pretty simple mistake. I reversed these two. Cast is everything that's even being read, and required is what must be present. So basically, I'm ignoring any input for is verified or password hash and then saying it has to be there so the the fix is basically just gonna do this and paste it in here and then and then grab this one and put it up here we'll save that and restart the server since it's a schema got to restart it then we'll try uh yeah we'll resend everything okay there we go so we've got a user now this is not live view anything this is just completely traditional phoenix generators uh, we can check that foo page though since i apparently left it in are we still getting key presses oh yeah we are we are okay good so live view is still set up and working on the app the next step is to replace the templates. Uh, for example, user show, and I'll get those in the sidebar, to replace these templates with LEEX templates to make some minimal changes to our context and our router, and then to write live views to replace these views. We'll do that next episode.